as Boston takes game one in dramatic fashion, 115 to 114. Wow, what a game that was in Boston. Jason Tatum goes for 31, the two biggest points at the end, lifting Boston to a 115-114 victory. Here at CBS Sports NBA Insider, Bill Ryder. What a game. That was absolutely bonkers, Bill. Yeah, that felt a lot more like a game seven than a game one. We got at least three more of these. This could be a hell of a series. And the main takeaway for me, it is incredibly unfair. One of these teams have to lose in the first round. My goodness. What a finish. So take you back to that final sequence. Kevin Durant, who is not great in this game, off the mark. Celtics have time. They're able to draw something up, able to get into some sort of uh, formation here, at least to make a play. I mean, th th walk me through this, what you saw here. Three best players on that Celtics team doing the thing you have to do in these situations. Move the ball, understand where you're at in terms of the clock. Uh, Jalen Brown tries to create. He's double teamed at one point, gets the ball to Smart. He finds Tatum, and Tatum's able to close that game out with just a millisecond to spare. That's trust, by the way. That's three guys who are great players, two guys who are stars in Tatum and Brown, trusting each other and waiting for the perfect moment to steal that thing from the Nets. Is is that a play that's designed, or is that just it's it's, no. it's backyard basketball out on the like park, and we're just running, we're trying to get a bucket right? Yeah, here. I think that's they went for a two for one, obviously in the first sequence when they scored quickly. Terrible defense by the Nets. Durant misses a three. It's get on transition, get the ball to uh, to Brown, see if you can create something. Then it's moving the ball and finding the guy. Great basketball. How deflating is this for Brooklyn? I mean, there's two ways to look at it. One right. way, like, do you want to be you want to be positive? But I mean, they, they 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 rallied. They were down by as many as 15. They yeah. tied this game. They had the lead in the fourth quarter. Yeah, I mean, look, it's brutal. You had a chance to steal a game on the road. You look like you're the team. You just squandered a huge Kyrie Irving game and, and, and fourth quarter. But Durant didn't play particularly well, and you just showed you can go toe-to-toe -to -toe against the Celtics in their building. This is going to be a six- or a seven-game series. I think if you're the Boston Celtics or you're the Brooklyn Nets, you're riding that high or that low. That's the takeaway. This is part one of a very vicious war, and there's a lot more to come. Uh, this this reminds me of um, a Cavaliers game. Of course it does, <laughs> of course right? It. I love that. Right? When J.R. Smith didn't know how much time was left, and he held onto the ball, and LeBron had the meme of, like, what are you doing? And they lost. Remember, they lost that game. Oh, yeah. This feels like they lost the series. The, the Nets? Yeah. So, look, I think there's time. I know left. that's dramatic. I, I'm, look, I'm, I'm going super dramatic here on that. Like, this feels like. You've got Cavs. Because we've got. PTSD our producer game. is Lucas. Oh, yeah. Lucas Frankel, massive Nets fan. Can like, the biggest Nets fan I ever know. Yeah, he's good. He's, he's a professional. But, like, right now, like, he feels like this series is over. And I don't blame him. Look, I think Boston was the favorite. This certainly helps. It is far from over. And the real takeaway for me, if I'm Lucas or a Nets fan, I'm looking for some positivity. You got to believe Kevin Durant. He said awful. Turned the ball over a lot. I know he Six had Six times. Yeah, was inefficient. Didn't look like he was in rhythm. He's going to be somewhere between good and extraordinary in two or three or four games going forward. They're going to be fine. It is a huge missed opportunity, but I think it's a reminder the Brooklyn Nets are not to be underestimated, even after that heartbreaking loss. Look at this stat here, bottom of your screen. Brooklyn 0 and 42 now when trailing by 10 or more points entering the fourth quarter. That is it. I I actually was trying to get I, I had almost six to one to, to get Brooklyn when they're down seven or eight at some point. I couldn't get the bet in, which makes me very very happy. I, yeah, I mean you got to be able to close, but that this is not this game is not that sad. This game is a wire to wire game that felt like it felt like an Eastern Conference Finals game seven. It really did. Your point about that Cavs game. It felt like such a seminal moment. It's just game one of the opening round of the playoffs. What did that moment mean for Jason Tatum? Oh, you know what? He's a superstar. And I think most people around the NBA know that he's a superstar. But you dropped a stat that I didn't know. If you've never had a buzzer beater, and Paul George went through this for years when he was a big time player, that'll stick with you as a player. Not only is the first time that he does it against the Nets, it's in the postseason. It's just a lift and a reminder. And he knew this, I can compete with these guys. I can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with these guys, and we, the Boston Celtics, are good enough to beat the Brooklyn Nets or anybody else. That's a big, big moment. What's, what's, what's impressive is the fact that Boston still wins this game, and, and yes, it's a buzzer beat in dramatic fashion, but they took the Nets' biggest punch. Yeah. They had Kyrie Irving playing a phenomenal game, 39 points. He had 18 of them in the fourth quarter. I mean, this was clutch Kyrie. They took, they were able to absorb the punch from Brooklyn and still win the game.
What does that say about Boston? I thought you and I were going to be sitting here talking about the Kyrie Irving game in all caps because he had that huge three what felt like when the game was tied with a little bit of time left. It felt like that was it. What it tells you is this Boston Celtics team, and we've discussed this, on paper they look like a championship contending team. Against the Brooklyn Nets this year, Jason Tatum has been a star and scored 50-plus points in one of those games. But it doesn't, it, it's not real until you see it under the bright lights and the pressure of the postseason. And, and to your point, they took that punch, they took that momentum, they took Kyrie as absolute most glorious offensively, and they were able to find a way to win. That tells them, I think, that they're championship, a championship caliber team. And it tells the rest of us, what we already knew, the East is stacked and put the Celtics at the very top of that group of teams that are good enough to make a run. Well, we already know the beef between Kyrie and Boston <laughs> yeah. and how that didn't work out. And he stepped on the logo during the regular season. He flipped off the fans in this game. Um, he did. He nothing, flipped off the Boston faithful. Nothing look, but Kyrie class. is the enemy. Yeah, look, you I can't, mean, you can't get, look, you can't give the, you can do whatever you want. Right. But there's no excuse for giving the bird to a fan base somewhere else of a, of a place you used to play. That is, and he obviously was motivated by it. It obviously gassed him up because he played extraordinary after that point, but it motivated that Celtics team too. I'll say that it'll be interesting how, how this series is officiated. I thought it was officiated fine, but they let this be a physical game, and that certainly benefits the Boston Celtics. And it got a little more physical after Kyrie did that. These teams don't like each other, and Kyrie Irving, I think, focused that, channeled that into the basketball there's no reason to give that kind of motivation to that Celtics team because they're going to defend their fans. Well, certainly motivated him. 18 of his 39 in good. the for fourth quarter for Kyrie Irving. So, I mean, look, we let this kind of settle in. We kind of uh, digest this game, the phenomenal finish with Jason Tatum scoring the buzzer beater as they win the game. But this is a seven-game series. Game two is now Wednesday. It's a little bit of a layoff here. Yeah. Who does that hurt? I think I, – I, I think it – I don't think the layoff is, is the issue. I think the loss is the issue. I think, the, I think right now the momentum goes to Boston because everybody knows that this, this Nets team is not your typical seven seed. You know it. I know it. The Nets know it. There was pressure, I think, on Boston not to lose this first game. They may lose the game on Wednesday, but this is one of those situations where if you're Boston, you don't want to wake up, be down a game, have to wait a couple days, and, and start to hear all the talk and maybe start to think in your own mind's eye about, man, Maybe the Nets are better. Maybe with Kyrie back, they are a one or two seed. Maybe we're not up to the task. Maybe the turnaround we had at the New Year isn't legitimate. I think it's a huge, huge game for the Boston Celtics. It, it, is, a, it is a missed opportunity for Brooklyn, but you win one out of the first two games, you're in really good shape. It's a long series. I think, I think the Boston Celtics are in a much better, better spot, Akeem, because if they lost that game, it feels like they're down 2-0. Yeah, correct me if I'm wrong. I, I, feel, like, I feel like, as, a, as an NBA fan, this hurts Boston. Because they have to sit. The time off. Yes, the, the time so, off. Because, like, th the momentum they have from this game. And now the Brooklyn Nets can sit there and go, we're going to flush. That. That's what professional athletes all the time say. We're going to flush that loss. The game one loss. We flush it. We forget about it. Three days later, we're going to play a game two. We're down 0-1 in the series. Like, we, we get rid of it. It's out of our minds. So, two ways to look at it. I, I see it a little differently, and I'll quote Jim Jackson, who did the Heat Hawks game earlier was talking about this exact same thing, but when you lose a game like this, he thinks it's actually worse for the losing team because you got to chew on that for a couple days. I think that if this were a younger team, this were, say, the Memphis Grizzlies coming off this win and they need that momentum, it, it would impact them more. Remember, this is a team where, where Tatum and Brown have been to Eastern Conference Finals multiple times, have done it without Kyrie Irving multiple times. One of those two times he was on the roster, but he was injured. This is how the NBA playoffs work. In the opening round, it lasts two weeks. It feels like if it goes six or seven, it's two months. And I think there's enough veterans on that team, that Boston team, to know how to process it, to have them been through this before, and to be able to take that really good feeling of winning that game and stretch it out over the next couple of days and hold on to some of that momentum. Do you want a sports network that delivers everything that matters about the game, the highlights, the picks, the instant analysis, no yelling, no fake debates, no politics? Hit the subscribe button and never miss a moment.